Good morning, Michael. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Now, October is Cybersecurity Month, so we're trying to draw attention to keeping you safe. What are some of the things that are big for you during the month of October? Well, we'll have multiple themes that we will run through uh, this month. One of the big ones that we have every year and that we'll continue to have this year is fishing. Fishing continues to kind of be a big area of concern because that's a large amount of the attacks. Uh, most surveys show that over a third of all cybersecurity attacks actually start through phishing. Yeah. Now, is there anyone more at risk for phishing than, than another, whether it be a demographic or, a, or an occupation or anything like that? You know, that's a good question. Really, when you think about phishing and, and you start to think about, you know, who's potentially at risk there, it's everyone. Yeah. You might think that it's just businesses, but it's also people at home. They're targeted many times over their banking. And you think even uh, elderly and others, they're targeted through these scams and phishing scams that I would call, you know, stranded abroad. So they send you an email or they send you a message and they say, a loved one is stranded in jail, something else, and needs money sent right away. Okay, now, you know, fishing is a, is a pretty broad thing. Is there a fishing category that you, are, you guys are seeing that's, that's on the rise right now? Yeah, and that's interesting because when you, when you think about fishing, there's fishing, which generally we think of through email. Then there's also what we call smishing, which is by text message. But one of the big ones that's really on the rise is business email compromise, or BEC. And with BEC, that's normally targeted to businesses, but the idea behind it is to redirect payment for payroll or services or something else, and to redirect that money over to the threat actor or the bad guy's uh, bank account. And the scary part is people are starting to use AI for that yes. now. Yeah. So they take and they use a fake or simulated voice to actually sound like the real person that you think they may that you should be talking to, but it's not them. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing what's available with AI. And you mentioned AI. How is that going to uh, impact and affect cybersecurity as we move forward? That's a good question. The thing about AI is a AI is like the best and the worst of both worlds when we think about it, because obviously from our side, what it helps us do from the positive is really we've automated a lot of the phishing process and it helps us automate these tickets and this work when it comes in the sock and do detection quicker. But on the flip side, this also means that the threat actors can be better at what they do. So they can send out these perfectly worded emails that don't have any typos or spelling errors and they can change the campaign very quickly to target individuals. So it's gonna make it much harder to detect against, but hopefully our tooling and defenses will get better. Yeah, I would imagine, you know, and it used to be, and, and you just mentioned it, uh, Michael, that that they're, they're doing a better job of making sure things are spelled correctly and that it looks more uh, like, it, like it is coming from a, a specific place. And it just seems like each and every day, these phishing scams and scams in general are just getting better and better at what they do. Yeah, that's that's entirely true. But the big the big takeaway is really this. When when you get something and you get an email, you get a text message, if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't look right, don't click on it. Don't respond to it. And when you look at this stuff, if they say it's coming from your bank or someone else, don't respond to the email. You no, know, most importantly, just call your bank or your financial institution directly. And the other one I would say as far as a good takeaway is never give anyone your password. Right. Your bank, your financial institution, others you deal with, they're never going to call you or text you or send you an email and ask for that type of information. They're just not going to do it. All right. That's a great thing to remember. It is a great baseline. If you get a phone call or you, they are contacting you, be leery. Verify with the people that, uh, that you think you're in communication with. Michael Gregg from the North Dakota IT Department, we thank you so much for the information. And if there is a place that people can go, if they need more help, if they have some questions, we have that on the screen. How do you recommend that people go about doing that? Yeah, that's great. That's secured. The defendnd.gov is a great site. We've got a lot of resources there for private individuals and for citizens of the state. So that's a great resource for them to start with. Sounds great. Michael Gregg, thank you so much. We appreciate it.